For those of you who haven't seen any of my other videos, um, this is my, it's called a Tradesman and I think it's got many brands, this particular iteration. Um, uh, motorcycle lift, which is just fantastic for an old geezer because um, I don't have to bend down. Um, I can put the bike, lock the front wheel in, get the back wheel off the ground, turn it around, put the back wheel in the lock, in the clamp, and, uh, and work on this bike as I see fit right now. I'm going to remove this side stand uh, that's um, bent and too short and my project today is to lengthen that. The bike fell over with um, all my gear on it because it's just too heavy and as you can see it bent that foot plate up um, in the process. So um, I'm going to, part of the reason why that happened is because this is just too short and there's just too much um, weight leaning over on this end bit. It doesn't even impact the actual base of the stand itself. So, um, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut this, it, weld a piece of tubing in there um, to extend it by about, I don't know, 15, maybe 20 millimeters at the most. And um, that should do the job. So that's the job for today. All right, so the first job I've got is, um, I'm going to jack this up, so excuse the wobble, um, is, to get the, um, is to get the spring off that, um, off that side stand. And um, I've got all sorts of wrist issues, so it's going to have to take me a couple of attempts with different kit, different tools to probably get this off. Hopefully that's not the case. Don't for that. Um, because I honest to God don't have the strength anymore in my hands to be able to oh I do. I lie, I do. Okay, so that's off. Now it's just a matter of removing the bolt. Okay, so I found a solution. What I've done is cable tied a 14 mil spanner onto the bolt at the back. And then I'm using uh, this bar wrench on the 17 mil side here just to get this, um, this bolt out. Uh, it wasn't really tight and um, I'm sure there's a good reason for it but uh, at least I got it moving and it's on its way out and uh, if there's a bit of noise in the background it's because I got my big ass industrial fan turning behind me it's a bit muggy down here in the basement and uh, I really need that I think I might put the ratchet on that now um, and uh, it is raining outside, but still, I tell you what, it. Um, I might just cable tie this stand up as well. Uh, alrighty, let's get that tied up somewhere. And do it on the center stand here. So it all, something just to act as another pair of hands if that doesn't keep falling. There we go. Now we're talking. Wow. Oh, it's some bolt they've got in there it's got to be against some nylon lock nut or something but it is 
good and, and tight all the way. You can see the way I'm working that this left wrist of mine, there's some advantages to it. Is it's not going to bend, that's for sure. But you've got such limited angles that you can work at um, with a fused wrist. And I also suffered from uh, what's called chronic regional pain syndrome in my hand after the surgery and uh, that's kind of left me with limited ability to close and I've got a really weak left hand. The surgery was supposed to strengthen my left hand well and give me a better grip and all that which is two of the reasons I had the surgery. One was because I was in continuous and constant pain whenever I used my wrist but the other reason was that um, I was losing strength in my grip now I was assured by the surgeon that the pain would be gone and I'd have a better grip than uh, I had at the time of the surgery and uh, well there was another myth um, well for me anyway I would advise people going to have these surgeries that are irreversible um, because it, there's no going back for me I just got to deal with it and look you know as I say I'm, I'm pain free in that wrist but um, that doesn't change the fact that I don't have a good grip. Well, eventually I got that off. That was a mission and a half just to remove one bolt. Um, and uh, it's, threaded, it's threaded there and there's the lock nut, the 14 mil lock nut that goes on the other side. So that was uh, what was doing, causing all the issues there. All right, it's off now. Let's move the camera because what I have now, of course, the bloody camera has gone into the, the front screen has gone into sleep mode. So I can't see where this is pointed. Um, anyway, I've got this piece of tube, which might be a bit, it might be a bit wide. The diameter might be a bit big for this, but nevertheless, I have to, I have to cut this, and I'm going to cut it there. I can't cut it above there because the spring's going to fit onto that. So I'm going to cut it here and um, and see if that pipe if it is too big i'll just go and get um, some some piping from bunnings i'll take the piece with me and go and get the piping that'll do the job okay so today what i'm going to be doing is i've cut <coughs> my side stand um, and the whole purpose of this is I want to extend it by 20 mils or so. Um, what I didn't do, which wasn't very smart, was mark which way around this all goes. So I'm going to have to quickly do that. Um, interesting. So yeah, I'll have to quickly do that. It's pointless welding this all together, and uh, the, the the foot isn't aligned properly with um, the spring. Which um, yes, okay. 
that was a bit of a faux pas so let me get to that and, um, and get back to working on this just, I've just put this on on the um, on the bike the on the pivot point on the bike and uh, this is the way it's supposed to go so I'm just going to mark this in a couple of places because it's going to get shifted around a bit anyway that's the way it's supposed to go and uh, at least there's a mark on it now. All right, so what I've got is I've got some tubing that I bought yesterday. And um, let me just cut this. I went on my bike, so I had to. Fortunately, I had some of these cable ties on the bike with me so that I could cable tie this whole lot together and fortunately what I also bought was another um, magnetic tool holder that I'm going to mount somewhere up here and um, it it served a good purpose on the bike because it just kept the, the these tubes fixed in place so I could bungee them onto onto the bike and ride home with it so uh, neither of these are perfect so and neither of them are really strong enough to do this job but I think together they will so what I intend doing is I'm going to use an insert to extend that's the first part of it um, I'll cut this down to the appropriate length so it fits in there and uh, and then I can just weld that on so that's the first bit and the second bit then is I will put an outer sleeve using this tubing over that uh, join and extend it down as far as I can go on the, on the foot plate which is not going to be a match unless I cut this thing off I, I might cut this off it's I don't know what its purpose is it's got this little I don't know, someone might be able to, if someone watches this and has a postie, please tell me what this little rubber foot is all about that goes onto these kickstand foot plates. Um, I don't, I, I, I really don't know what purpose they serve, other than just getting in the way and being a little annoying. So I'm going to cut this off because I, I absolutely see no purpose to it. It's probably for soft boggy terrain that uh, this will then, if you put the kickstand out in soft boggy terrain, it will also give you a little bit of a wider footprint. That's the only thing I can think it does. But I've also cut this piece of, of plate out and um, I'm going to weld that also onto this foot plate of the kickstand and, um, and just have it extended like that. I think that'll, that'll do a better job than that piece of rubber at just giving me a better footprint for that kickstand to go down on. So yeah, two bits that I've got to do. This is quite thin material. So I'll have to be careful when I weld that. And um, this tubing, I don't know what, that looks like, I don't know, one and a half mil tubing. Let's see if it tells you on here. 1.2 mil. It's not very, it's not very thick. So, and the, yeah, it's both 1.2 mil. Who knows whether that'll do the job. I wanted to use this piece of uh, galvanized tubing here, which is plumbing tubing. It's much thicker. It's probably two and a half mils. And, um, but it's just, it's just not the right diameter. And I'm not going to butt weld this because one, I'm not a good welder. And two, 
a butt weld is not going to be as strong as if I insert and and then overlap this tubing. So that's going to be my approach. Uh, worst things were, the worst thing that can happen is that the the the, the kickstand starts to this foot plate starts to bend out a bit on that tubing. Um, who knows? If it does, I'll buy a new one and do a better job the next time around. So we'll see how all this tracks. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is just quickly cut this tube and see how it all hangs together in there. I've marked it off. It should give me 30 mils of, of uh, extension on the side stand, so let's see how it goes. That noise in the background is my industrial fan going because it really gets uh, super muggy in here down in the basement and uh, it just helps keep things cool a bit. So that's how deep it's going to go in there, that's how deep it's going to go in there and it's going to give me about a 30 mil extension uh, on the on the side stand. That's perfect. I think that'll do the job for me. And then I'll put the sleeve. Uh, so I'll weld that in place, and then I'll weld the sleeve over this. But first, I'm going to cut this uh, annoying little gadget off, whatever it's called. I just don't want to cut too deeply into the tubing by mistake there. There we go. That'll do it. Alright, let's neaten that up. So that should, that should give me more tubing to work with uh, on the outer portion of this, which is good. Because I can't go further up um, there. A little bit of, of weld I could grind off on that. Um, but what I'm now able to do is get that tube all the way down so get that tube all the way down to there and uh, so with that and the inner tube inside I think that might just do it and if it doesn't, well, so be it. We have to come back to the drawing board. Um, that's all there is to it. And um, so what I want, I'm going to grind that off because I think it'll give me a much better footprint. For There's a strength in it going down the tube. Uh, Oh yeah, that's much better. So that gives me at least another five mils or six mils of this outer sleeve going on there now. It goes almost down to this um, spring anchor. So that's going to work. 
perfectly. So now I've got to measure this up. Not that I need the power on this thin tubing, but there are times when that's just not enough. And uh, so let's deburr that quickly. Didn't do a good job of that. Okay, so here's the arrangement. That goes in. That goes over. And that goes on. And now I've just seen problem number two. So perhaps I can only weld. Oh. The inner tube in one place. And otherwise I'm never going to get this outer tube on. So that's a pity. Didn't think about that, did you, Gavin? Didn't think about that. Unless Take that whole foot plate off and weld this one directly onto the new tubing. That might be a plan. That might be a plan. What do you think, Gavin? What do you think? Um, hmm. Because that's going to serve no purpose, really, other than just giving me... So I think I'm going to do that. I cut that off. And... Uh, and then weld that straight on there. Yep. So that came off, and I got it nice and close to the edge, so um, I'm not even sure I'm going to deburr that, because I'll cut, it'll be a little bit rounded if I do that, and I want a nice flat surface to use as, as a well. And I've got that marked, so... I had it marked, there's the mark. And okay, I'll have to align it all later. Um, so that'll go on there, that'll go on there. Oh, it was going on there, I don't know what happened, there we go. then that'll go so let's do that again for the camera <laughs> right so that's going to go in there uh, that will go over there this goes in between the two um, I'm not going to be able to weld the inner tube but I'll certainly get the outer tube done. And then, then I'm gonna weld that footprint on there. Okay, get the sequence right, Gavin, because otherwise you're gonna have to buy another side stand. 
So that goes first, then, no, this goes first, one, two, and that will go three, and then the footprint glass. Okay. All right, I think that'll do it. So, one, One, two, three. Now let's mark this. One, three. Otherwise, uh, even with my short-term memory, I'll forget all about that. Okay, so this is going to give me 13 mils. At first I should just weld that in there. time warp going there on the welding and the grinding and all the boring stuff well to some it's just sparks and noise and um, so I've done the inner sleeve and uh, welded it in as best I could and um, I don't know if you, it's visible there at all and um, the outer sleeve I actually had to just give some assistance to with the Trojan and um, so it's over there so snugly I don't believe I need to do any welding whatsoever um, so now it's just a matter of welding the, the new foot plate onto onto the stand and um, so that will that'll go like so and I've just got to get some magnets and be able to position this so I can just tack it on there and then uh, complete the weld around. Okay. Now we're cooking with gas. Problem is I've got different thickness metals here and one's burning through and anyway we'll we'll make do. Well, it's not pretty, it's not pretty at all. Well, let's see if I can pretty it up just a bit. For a desk jockey, 
doing this on my own. So, here's the finished job, ugly welds and all. Um, and uh, yeah, I think it's going to work perfectly. Um, well, I don't know if it's going to work perfectly, but I certainly hope like hell it is. Sure, it clears the chain okay, um, which it does. I might just grind that corner off there just. No, it's not going to, it's not going to get up there. No, that's fine. If it does, I'll grind it off. But I think that's probably as good as I'm going to be able to do it. So I'll let this cool down and then spray it up. And uh, that's that job done. Right, so I have completed the adjustments to my kickstand that um, I, look, I was looking to achieve, painted it up, and uh, I'm ready to fit that back on the bike. Might be a bit long, but you know, we'll just have to wait and see. I don't think so. Anyway, if it is, it is. Better than it being too short, I'll tell you that much, because um, the bike, you know, fell over, has fallen over twice on me. I've got a nice um, coffee from the brewery just up the road. Uh, they make a really great coffee. So if you're ever at North Bondi and uh, you're interested in having a, a coffee, it's just a little coffee shop. They only basically do coffees sort of out onto the street. They've got a little alfresco area outside and they do the best coffee and they're just the friendliest people. So definitely worth stopping by. Fantastic uh, bike stand this, it really is. It's a back saver. It uh, puts everything right where you need it. You want to work on the side stand like I've just been doing. You sit down on your little trolley stool, you jack the bike up to whatever height you need it and and off you go and if you need to work on the motor you can just lift it up a bit more it's just brilliant it's the best thing i've ever bought um it makes me want to work on the bike rather than just put the whole bloody thing off um, because you just know you're going to have have backache and everything happening that you don't need happening at this age. So don't worry, I still get stiff and sore from doing all this movement that you know, I'm really not accustomed to. And uh, so I still get the odd ache and, well, not the odd, I still definitely have a bit of a few aches and pains after I've been working for a day on the bike. But look at that. It is just so easy to do. And let's try a first side stand kick. Oh, that is fantastic. I don't think it could be better. What a difference. What a difference that makes. I'll try and get this bike straight onto the camera um, to, so you can see the lean, how it leans over. That's still a fair bit, but it's a good, it's a good lean on to the left now with the stand that I've lengthened. Now have a look what happens when I lean it over on to the right hand side how much more this bike leans and what was happening was because I had kit up here and the side panniers on 
it created, well, it lifted the whole center of gravity of the bike and it would just tip. It, I mean, it's not taking a lot of, for me to do that now and it would just tip over onto the whatever side I had the stand out. Whereas that is so much better. It doesn't give it that opportunity to, for the, the center of gravity to whatever you want to call it, the top heaviness, the top heaviness to play its part in, in upsetting the bike. So I'm really happy with that. What, what a win, what a win. So I've got my side stand sorted out. I've also done the tank. It is really nice and firm now. I just packed some more cut pieces of pool noodle and, um, and packed them in underneath the tank, between the tank and the down tube. And that's all it needs. Um, it's on very securely at the back. And uh, so I'm not concerned about that at all. It's, uh, I was more concerned with it just, you know, when you get movement happening all the time uh, and you've got maybe a little bit of a, some bit of wiring sandwiched between the tank and the frame that it'll eventually wear that through and uh, cause some short circuiting of something that you really don't need to happen right underneath the fuel tank. So I'm, well, job done. I feel like a winner today. And uh, I'm going to go home, have a shower, and relax for the rest of the day. I don't even know what time it is. No, I don't care what time it is. So that's me done. Cheers, folks. Yeah.